Today is a big day because in this video, we are about to have our very first ever close encounter with a deep sea creature. Now I know what you're thinking, Mark, where is the boat? You've got to head way offshore to do something like that. But I'm here to tell you where we're going, we don't need boats. Welcome to Aquarium Encounters, which also happens to be one of the only places in the world to encounter the creature we're after today. Wow, are you kidding me? Look at how cool these are. I mean, I cannot believe we are standing right in front of this many deep sea giant isopod. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight giant isopod in the tank in front of us to learn all about in today's video. Whoa, this is incredible. I cannot believe we're standing in front of these creatures. There are about 20 variety of them that live in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans very, very deep at the bottom. We're talking anywhere from 700 to 7,000 feet. Wow, that is deep. And about half of the isopods on planet Earth live in the ocean and half of them live on land. Although these are the largest isopods that you can find, the ones that live in your backyard are those small little pill bugs. The roly poly is related directly to the giant isopod. Now, even though they look like it, these isopods are not insects, they're not bugs. They are actually more closely related to crabs and lobsters. And, oh boy, they are super weird looking, I will admit, but man, are they cool. If you were to come visit this aquarium, anyone is allowed to touch the deep sea isopods. This is a touch tank. In fact, there are ports all around the top here and yep, that water is cold. Definitely kept below 50 degrees at all times, but anyone can come up and pet the giant isopod. But today we are getting extra special permission to remove the top of the aquarium and get really hands-on because I wanna get the giant isopod as close to the cameras as possible. Because these animals live in the deepest parts of the ocean, they need to keep their aquarium here as cold as possible. So this water is kept around 50 degrees Fahrenheit at all times to mimic the deepest parts of the ocean. Oh, all right, here goes nothing. Time to get hands-on with the giant isopod. Oh, this is creepy. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. Alien. That is unbelievable. Look at that face. A face only a mother could love. I think you're cool, though. All right. Why is the giant isopod so giant? I mean, its cousin, the roly poly, is probably a one thousandth of its size. Well, the most well accepted theory is deep sea gigantism, which is found in a variety of animals, most notably in the squid species. Of course, you've probably heard of the giant squid or the colossal squid that are huge. Same goes with the giant isopod, much, much larger than any of its terrestrial or shallower relatives. Now, there are around 20 species of large isopods that live in the deep sea, but this one is the biggest. And there are two size ranges. There's giants and super giants. A giant isopod will be anywhere from three to six inches, and a super giant like this one can be up to two feet in length. And I would say the one in front of us here is approaching maximum size. Look at that creature. <laughs> this is too cool. Now the exoskeleton is really rigid, a lot like a lobster or a crab. I can really feel the rigidity of those segments. The underside is very soft. I can actually press in on the belly of the beast. That is wild. I did not expect a giant isopod to have softer parts like that. And on the underside here, we have the pleopods, which can also be found on animals like lobsters. And these are the swimming appendages of this animal. Yes, believe it or not, although this looks like an insect that can only crawl around, the giant isopod is an excellent swimmer. And what's also really cool about the pleopods is these are the appendages that allow the animal to breathe. There's actually a gas exchange that occurs in those parts of the animal. The legs feel super creepy, but not that menacing. Now, We'll move up from the legs and we want to take a closer look at that head. So you'll notice the giant isopod has pretty big eyes. In fact, their eyes are specially developed for very dark environments. When you get below a thousand feet in the ocean, you enter what's called the midnight zone where almost no light can travel. So 
For their entire lives, these animals live in almost complete darkness. They have pretty poor eyesight. They're not very responsive to light changes at all, and they rely most of their lives on navigating around and understanding their environment through these four antenna appendages here. There's two sets of antenna. The small ones at the top are chemical sensing. So this is what's going to help them find their food. It's going to help them understand what other animals or organic things are around them in the environment. And then you have the feelers, the two longer antenna underneath. And these two antenna are used to feel their way around their environment, which is completely dark. I'm, I'm having a, a fairly hard time hanging on to it. It's definitely trying to get back down to the bottom of the tank. Its legs are equipped with these grappling hooks. It's almost like a claw, like a lobster claw. In fact, yeah, look at that. It's got my finger in its front claws there and they can actually squeeze down and can grapple on. And what they use those claws for are breaking apart their prey and forcing the food to the mouth. Yes, it looks strange. And I can tell you its diet is even stranger. These are carnivorous creatures of the deep sea and they will eat just about anything that they can get their mouths on. I'm talking deceased fish, I'm talking whales. Researchers have even fed alligators to these animals to see if they would eat something that's not native to their environment. And yes, they absolutely will. And because of their appetite for all things deceased, you're probably asking yourself, what would happen if a human ended up down there at the bottom of the sea? Yes, as morbid as it sounds, if a human ends up in their environment, it's on the menu too. Now I wanna find something out. You know, obviously I've been keeping my fingers and hands away from those mouth parts all video long, but now it's time to find out, does the isopod have a taste for human flesh? Should we find out? Let's give it a quick try. You guys ready for this? That water is cold and I know those mouth parts, those four sets of jaws, are extraordinarily sharp. Ooh, this is creepy. So I'm gonna put the mouth right on my arm and see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, you see it? Ah, I can feel it poking around. It's trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, it's, oh, it's claws are digging in. Ah, that water. So cool. <sighs> Nothing. Just wants to hang out. And I wanted to show you that for a reason because although these creatures can look menacing, they are absolutely gentle giants and they would never bite a human being in this circumstance. There's no need to fear this animal. If you ever come out to this aquarium, I highly recommend that you check out the giant isopod touch tank because getting hands on or even having the chance to touch an animal from the abyss like this is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. All right, well, my hands are freezing. I'm gonna put our isopod friend here back at the bottom of the tank. I hope everybody at home enjoyed this look at our first ever deep sea creature. I'm Mark Vins, be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Woo!